it's time to get the lead out. If you're a child of the 50s or always wished you could have been one, then step inside one of these candy apple low rolling time machines. These are lead sleds, the affectionate nickname for full custom hot rods that made their debut about 40 years ago on the streets of America and are once again on the prowl. To create a lead sled, you begin with a 1950s full-size car, usually a hardtop, and lower it all around, trim off the chrome, shoot it with a hot paint job, play with the wheel treatment, trick out the interior, make sure there's enough muscle under the hood, and you're in business. Here in Parsippany, New Jersey, Lead East is a good example of what happens when several hundred of these low-slung heavy cruisers all converge simultaneously. Ted Coffeen of Newport Ritchie, Florida, drives his 1956 Pontiac lead sled everywhere. I drive it all over. This car wasn't built to be trailing. It's never been on a car trailer, except for uh, one time when I blew a motor. <laughs> but we just enjoy it. We drive it all over. I drove it up from Florida to the show, and uh, I'll be driving it back starting Sunday. Which is pretty much the prevailing philosophy of any confirmed lead sledder. At an event like this, it's more common to see the sleds in motion than just sitting pretty, which takes a certain degree of courage, since most sleds are only a few inches off the ground, and the simple act of pulling into a driveway could cost you a front roll pan. But then again, these rotters have had plenty of experience reworking sheet metal. The body itself has got 224 modifications to it. It's a seriously modified car. Uh, most people, when you look at it, you don't see the, the subtle changes in the car, like the, all four corners of the hood are rounded, which normally aren't done. The peak's been removed, and uh, so is the lip across the front. The, I got mercury headlights that are Frenched. The entire grill is molded. Four teeth have been added to the grill. On the sides of the car, the handles, door handles are missing. We got remote uh, control openers for it. And uh, these doors are from a, from a two-door hardtop, and so is the roof. And it looks like a convertible is really a hardtop. And if your tastes run to something newer, how about Ray's 1988 Cadillac sled? The concept of this car was to try to show the younger kids today that you can make new customs. The new lead sleds that I think are going to be the cars of the future because there's only so many of these old cars left and they're now making repop fiberglass ones even because you can't buy them anymore. So uh, a low cost, now you're looking at the $40,000 53 Chevrolet a minute ago, and now you're looking at a, a, a fairly new Cadillac that, that uh, you could do for ten to twelve, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 if you do it right. Andy LaFlamme's 49 Olds Fastback is definitely done right. Plenty of cool body modifications and plenty of punch under the hood. Under the hood is a 350 Chevy with a 400 tranny. The motor's got 30 over, it's got roller rockers. It's pushing out some horsepower. It's mostly a lot of what other people have done to it, shave the handles. It's a good 50s theme, you know. Uh, the French headlights. I wanted to keep the Olds parking lights in it. It's a good little touch. Let people know it is an Olds, even though they think it's a Chevy. Nobody mistakes John Reno's 53 Ford for a Chevy, although the bodacious bodywork might have you believing it came from another planet. It's been sectioned, lowered, dechromed, and has parts from Packards, DeSotos, and a 1958 T-Bird scattered throughout. And check those suicide doors. That was a job. The suicide doors, yeah, that, I did that myself. I made the hinges from scratch. It took like 22 hours to do the first door, and about five after I knew how to do them. I mean, and that still was a while. Sylvia and Tony Venuti's 50 Merc lead sled could be the cover car for the lead sled encyclopedia. It's got everything a solid gold lead sled should come equipped with. Lowered suspension, 57 caddy hubcaps, and those ever familiar scarlet flames. A theme that carries over to the interior as Sylvia shows us. The interior was done by Billy Scott in Kentucky. And as you can see, we have a TV in the back. I can roll my seat back while he's driving and watch it. And we have all the flames he's done. He's embossed all through all through the, the roof of the car. And he, he made all the side panels. You can see all the flames there and the flame rugs. It's really a comfortable car. All those flames remind us of another essential feature on any true blue lead sled, flamethrowers. A clever system that sprays raw gasoline or alcohol into the exhaust pipe and is then ignited by a spark plug triggered by a switch inside the car creates this five alarm firestorm that defies description. Hey, take it from us. Lead sleds are hot.